All right, guys. Today I'm going to explain you on lipoprotein metabolism. So, as you all know that uh, in lipoprotein metabolism, so the metabolism of chylomicrons, very de very low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. These are the things we are going to discuss in lipoprotein metabolism. So, just to give you a brief introduction to lipoproteins, so we have chylomicrons which are least dense, which have at least dense molecules and then we have VLDL which is very low density lipoprotein, then we have IDL intermediate density lipoprotein, LDL for low density lipoprotein and then we have HDL that is high density lipoprotein. Just to give you a brief idea about apolipoproteins which are important on each of these molecules for chylomicrons important apolipoproteins are apolipoprotein B48 and apoC2 and apoE these are the important apolipoproteins then the VLDL molecule very low density lipoprotein important apolipoproteins on the surface is apoB100 and then apoE and apoC2 for LDL it is apoB100 for HDL it is apolipoprotein A1 so these are all the important apolipoproteins present over the lipoprotein particles. Now along with this apolipoproteins, HDL particularly, it has got CETP that is cholesterol ester transport protein. Then it has got peroxinase which is an antioxidant enzyme and then it has got LCAT that is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. With this introduction, let me begin with uh, lipoprotein metabolism. So, I will start with the absorption, digestion and absorption of the lipids. So, digestion of the absorption of lipid, I have a video on that in the YouTube. So, you can go to that video and uh, know the details of digestion and absorption. So, I will be very brief in uh, explaining you the digestion and absorption of lipids here. So, the dietary lipid, so the diet has got triacylglycerol, it has got cholesterol ester, it has got phospholipid, some of the free fatty acid and then it has got vitamin A, D, E, K all this in the diet so intestines absorb them basically it is absorbed in the brush border epithelium so after the digestion done by mediated by pancreatic enzymes so the pancreatic enzymes that is pancreatic lipase along with the colipase so I will just write uh, one of the brush border epithelium in the intestine so the triacylglycerol in the lumen it is digested into free fatty acids free fatty acids and two monoacylglycerol one molecule of two monoacylglycerol done by pancreatic lipase along with the colipase this is need this needs bile acids and bile salts emulsification and all that process so cholesterol ester digested by cholesterol esterase enzyme into cholesterol plus fatty acid then the phospholipid, phospholipid is digested into lysophospholipid and fatty acid and vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin A, D, E, K. All of that, they all will undergo diffusion, simple diffusion. Only point that you need to remember here is cholesterol absorption is inefficient. Only 55% of the cholesterol is absorbed, 45% just goes in the feces. Once all these molecules are undergoing simple diffusion, they will be re-esterified into triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and vitamin A, D, E, K. All of them, these molecules will be loaded on to ApoB48 which is synthesized in the intestine. Okay, how the ApoB48 is synthesized? ApoB48 synthesis, it will undergo mRNA editing. So the mRNA for ApoB100 is basically 48% translated. Why? Because in the intestine there is an enzyme called cytidine deaminase the cytidine deaminase it is going to convert GAA into UAA cytidine deaminase so GAA which is coding for glutamine normally it codes for glutamine this is converted to UAA and as you all know UAA is a stop codon so this job is done by cytidine deaminase enzyme I am just writing it as CD here cytidine D aminase okay because of that so UAA becomes stop codon and translation is stopped and this happens when 48 percent of your mRNA for ApoB100 is translated that's why you get ApoB48 here 
So FOB48 after taking triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and vitamin A, D, K and this molecule we call it as chylomicron. And this chylomicron is a large molecule so it cannot be uh, secreted into the blood vessel. So initially it is secreted into lymphatics then it finds its way into the bloodstream. So once it is there in the bloodstream your chylomicron which has got triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and ADEK. This chylomicron originally it has got FOB48 and it's going to and I write chylomicron as CM here. This is going to acquire FOC2 and FOE from HDL. So it, it gets FOC2, I'll write C2 here, FOC2 and FOE. It gets it from HDL. Okay. So once it gets that from HDL, this is a mature chylomicron. So the mature chylomicrons as they move in the blood vessel and also note that entire lipoprotein metabolism is going on in the blood vessel. Okay. So as it is moving on in the blood vessel, so I will write uh, the endothelium here. So consider this is the blood vessel. Let me change the color. This is the blood vessel and I am just writing the endothelium of the blood vessel. So and to the endothelium of blood vessel, LPA is at LPL is attached. That is lipoprotein lipase is attached to the endothelium of blood vessel with the help of aparon sulfate. Aparon sulfate is a glycosamine of glycon. So it is holding on to lipoprotein lipase. Now your chylomicron is moving in the circulation. As it is moving through this lipoprotein lipase, so the APOC2, especially this APOC2 here, it is going to activate lipoprotein lipase enzyme. So in connection with the APOC2, lipoprotein lipase is activated and what it does it is going to break down triacylglycerol present in the chylomicrons and release free fatty acids. And those that free fatty acid will be taken up by the peripheral tissue. It gets into the peripheral tissue. Free fatty acid is get, getting into peripheral tissue and also it releases glycerol. So basically lipoprotein lipase is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol molecule. So, free fatty acid will be used for whatever the needs of the peripheral tissue, for membrane formation and whatever the needs of it. Glycerol will go back to the liver and it will be converted to glycerol 3 phosphate and glycerol 3 phosphate can be used to make triacylglycerol or glycerol 3 phosphate can be converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and that can get into glycolysis. That's the fate of glycerol coming from chylomicron because chylomicrons are formed only when you are in well fed condition. Chylomicron metabolism is going on in the well fed condition. And also note that insulin is going to stimulate your lipoprotein lipase enzyme. In the presence of insulin, expression of lipoprotein lipase increases. It means metabolism of chylomicrons also increases. Anyway, with the action of this lipoprotein lipase, so continuous degradation of triacylglycerol occurs at some point in time. FOC2 will go back to HDL. There will be release of FOC2. Okay. So once that happens, you are calling this molecule as chylomicron remnant. So remaining portion of chylomicron. So I'll write it as CM remnant. Chylomicron remnant. This chylomicron remnant now it has got FOB48. Then it has got FOE. And also it has got more in now it is rich in cholesterol, cholesterol ester. Then it has got some amount of triacylglycerol. Of course, it has got phospholipid and vitamin A, D, E, K. All these fat soluble vitamins are still there. Okay, now it will be taken up by the liver. So the chylomicro remnants will be taken up by the remnant receptors present over the hepatocyte membrane. So this receptor is FOE receptor. FOE receptor, FOER receptor, chylomicron remnants will go and bind with the FOE receptor. Basically FOE is recognized by FOE receptor and it is internalized. Basically it is going to offload all the content means cholesterol, cholesterol ester, then vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin A, D, E, K, some amount of phospholipid whatever is there in the chylomicron remnant is offloaded and also of course the protein is degraded into amino acids basically 
FOB 48, FOE, all that is degraded into amino acids. That's what is, that's the fate of chylomicron remnants. Okay. So overall in this metabolism, what we have seen, chylomicrons are formed in the intestine. They are matured in the circulation by gaining FOC2 and FOE from HDL. Then lipoprotein lipase is activated by FOC2 and it is going to degrade triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol. Free fatty acid is used by the peripheral tissue wherever that is going on. Glycerol will go back to the liver. Glycerol will be taken back to the liver here. Get into the, get into the liver glycerol. Glycerol is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate and this can be going into triacyl glycerol formation or glycerol 3 phosphate converted to DHAP and DHAP gets into glycolysis. That's the fate of glycerol coming from chylomicrons okay and insulin keeps your lipoprotein lipase active in the presence in the well fed condition there is more and more metabolism of chylomicrons so at the end of it all chylomicron converted to chylomicron remnant it has got cholesterol ester cholesterol phospholipid vitamin e dk all that is taken to the liver and offloaded there this is how your dietary lipids are carried from intestine and they will end up in the liver except that triacyl glycerol portion is used by the peripheral tissue. Each peripheral tissue they will express different kinds of LPL. So skeletal muscle, sorry, the cardiocyte LPL, it has got low KM, it means it's going to act on chylomicrons most of the time. Whereas adipose tissue LPL, it has got high KM, it means it's a low affinity enzyme. It will use chylomicron only when there are plenty of chylomicrons in the circulation. All right, now let me explain you on metabolism of VLDL. So as you all know, under fed conditions, especially when someone takes carbohydrate rich diet. So glucose, glucose is converted to acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA can be diverted into fatty acid synthesis in the cytoplasm. Okay. So the fatty acids can be synthesized. Cholesterol can be synthesized under well fed conditions, especially influenced by insulin. So whenever there is increase in the synthesis of cholesterol, which is converted to cholesterol ester in the liver by ACAT enzyme that is acyl CoA acyl transferase enzyme and then you make triacyl glycerol under fed condition and then you have vitamin E coming from that that vitamin E here because vitamin E need to be transported out by VLDL whereas other vitamins that is fat soluble vitamin A, D and K they are separate transporters so vitamin E here and some amount of phospholipid all this will be loaded on to EPO lipoprotein B100. Okay, so the lipids from smooth endoplasmic reticulum and EPO B100 in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it will be trans fat is transported into the rough endoplasmic reticulum by MTP microsomal transfer protein. Okay, so that's how you make VLDL here and this VLDL is secreted into the circulation. Now your VLDL is in the circulation. Right, it has VLDL here. This is VLDL, which is called as nascent VLDL, newly synthesized VLDL molecule. So now it has got triacyl glycerol, and that's the major composition. Then it has cholesterol ester, phospholipid, and vitamin E, and it has B100 on the surface. Now this VLDL it will acquire means it will take FOC2 and FOE from HDL, just like your chylomicron. As chylomicron, we have seen. It is taking FOE and FOC2 from HDL in the same way FOC2 and FOE it will be given by HDL to VLDL. Now this VLDL is considered as a matured VLDL now. Maturation is going on in the circulation. So the matured VLDL as it is passing through the LPL. See this is again same process. LPL in, attached to the endothelium which was acting on chylomicron before now it is going to act on VLDL. So LPL is going to degrade triacyl glycerol present in the VLDL and it is going to release free fatty acids taken up by the peripheral tissue and it is going to release glycerol. Okay. Now with the action of LPL, so constantly triacyl glycerol is broken down into free fatty acids and glycerol. And also note that VLDL synthesis not only goes on in well-fed condition, it can also go on under fasting condition. Why? Because 
Under fasting condition, there will be lipolysis going on in the adipose tissue. If there is too much of lipolysis, so the fatty acids which are flooding into the liver, those fatty acids can be esterified to make triacylglycerol and you can synthesize VLDL. And VLDL comes into the circulation. Only thing is, under fasting condition, insulin level is less. Because of this, LPL action can be reduced or decreased. Because of this, metabolism of VLDL can be affected. Otherwise, VLDL can be synthesized under fed condition and also under fasting condition. Anyway, so whether it is in fed condition or in fasting condition, depending on the levels of insulin, LPL is active. So it is going to degrade triacyl glycerol into fatty acid and glycerol. So meanwhile, once this happens at some point in time, there will be release of HEPO-C2. HEPO-C2 will go back to HDL. At that time, we call that molecule as IDL. So we have, we got IDL now. IDL has got, still it has got some amount of triacyl glycerol. It has got cholesterol ester. It has got phospholipid and it has got vitamin E. Now it has got B100 and it has got FOE because we have released FOC2 and that will go back to the HDL. Okay, once it, it doesn't have FOC2, so no longer it is going to be catalyzed by a lipoprotein lipase. Now what happens to the IDL? IDL has got three fates. One fate of IDL is it can be taken up by the liver and that is done by FOE receptor. FO E receptor which are called as remnant receptors very similar to what we have seen here for chylomicron remnant same remnant receptors can uptake IDL and all the contents will go to the liver that's one fate of it another fate of IDL is it can pass through the membrane of hepatocyte that is the sinusoids of the hepatocyte over the side my membrane of hepatocyte we have an enzyme called hepatic lipase I'll write that as HL HL for hepatic lipase. What this hepatic lipase does, it is going to degrade this triacylglycerol. Triacylglycerol is degraded into free fatty acids and glycerol molecule. So with the action of hepatic lipase, so you are degrading triacylglycerol and the molecule is coming out of it. And the molecule that comes out of hepatic lipase will now has very less amount of triacylglycerol and it has more cholesterol ester, phospholipid, some amount of phospholipid and it has got vitamin E and less amount of triacylglycerol. Meanwhile, as it is released from hepatic lipase, FOC2 will go back to HDL. Sorry, not FOC2. FOE will go back to HDL. So, now your molecule has got only FOB100 on the surface and this molecule is called as LDL that is low density lipoprotein. That's the second fate of IDL. So first fate what we have seen, it is completely taken up by the liver, by FOE receptor. Second fate is hepatic lipase acting on it, converted to LDL. Third fate of IDL is, IDL will undergo a reaction catalyzed by CETP. CETP. The CETP enzyme is cholesterol ester transfer protein. What this cholesterol ester transfer protein does is, it is going to transfer cholesterol ester from HDL 3 into VLDL, IDL and LDL. Let me write that part for you. So HDL 3, it will be something like this. It has got, it is rich in cholesterol ester in the center and it will be having some amount of phospholipid and on the surface it will have FOA1, FOA1. Then it has got three enzymes on the surface and that is CETP. This is what I am going to explain you now, CETP. Then it has got LCAT and it has got peroxinase enzyme. And of course, it has got all the apolipoproteins except FOB100 and FOB48. That's the composition of HDL. HDL has got all the other apolipoproteins except FOB48 and FOB100. And it additionally, it has got CETP, LCAT, peroxinase. So, CETP that is there on the HDL, what it does, it's going to interact with VLDL, it's going to interact with IDL, it's going to interact with LDL, all the three enzymes, sorry, all the three lipoproteins interact with the HDL molecule and this is an HDL3 here, HDL3. HDL3 interacts with VLDL, IDL and LDL via CETP. What the CETP enzyme does? CETP enzyme, it is going to take 
triacylglycerol from VLDL is going to take triacylglycerol from LDL is going to take triacylglycerol from IDL all three of them in return what it does is going to give cholesterol ester to them to the VLDL cholesterol ester is given to the LDL cholesterol ester is given to IDL so all three molecules will receive cholesterol ester from HDL3 in return they are going to give triacylglycerol that is the function of cholesterol ester transport protein why this is going on the importance of this is cholesterol ester that is there in the HDL3 how that comes into the HDL3 I am going to explain that in HDL metabolism so HDL3 is rich in cholesterol ester that cholesterol ester is exchanged with VLDL, IDL, LDL for triacylglycerol ultimately what happens what we have seen VLDL is converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL so LDL is getting rich and rich in cholesterol ester okay it means cholesterol ester that was there in the HDL3 ultimately it ends up in LDL molecule why because VLDL converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL this LDL once this LDL is synthesized matured this LDL is 40% is taken up by the extra hepatic tissues by LDL receptor this is an LDL receptor which is going to recognize FOB100 40% of the circulating LDL will be taken up by LDL receptor 60% of it will be taken up by liver again by LDL receptor LDL receptor 60% will be taken up by the liver 40% is taken up by the extra hepatic tissues that is how LDL will end up into extra hepatic tissues that are peripheral tissue so what is there in the LDL you have cholesterol ester vitamin E some amount of phospholipid and very little amount of triacylglycerol and that's how all your cholesterol ester and cholesterol along with the vitamin E it ends up into extra hepatic tissues extra hepatic tissue 40% of that and rest 60% will go to the liver from the liver that will come back again in the form of VLDL so it means redistribution is going on here so any tissue which doesn't need cholesterol they are going to pump it out which I am going to explain you in HDL metabolism so tissues which needs cholesterol they express high levels of LDL receptor that's the concept that you need to remember any tissue which needs cholesterol there will be increased expression of LDL receptor on the membrane any tissue which has got plenty of cholesterol there will be decreased expression of LDL receptor on the membrane it means tissues which have got plenty of cholesterol they are not taking LDL inside tissues which needs cholesterol they are going to take LDL inside in this sense basically HDL cholesterol which is taking cholesterol from the peripheral tissue giving it to VLDL, IDL, LDL ultimately it ends up in LDL that will be taken up by 60% of it is taken up by the liver and again coming back into the circulation by VLDL converted to LDL 40% of that is taken up by the any tissues which needs LDL means which needs cholesterol in this sense basically you are doing redistribution so CETP function is all about redistributing cholesterol from the tissues which has got plenty to the tissue which has got less okay that's how the redistribution is going on for cholesterol molecule all right let, let me explain now on hdl metabolism so hdl metabol like synthesis of hdl it will go it will be from intestine and the liver so the hepatocytes and the intestinal epithelial cells they have got an ability to synthesize apoa1 that is apolipoprotein a1 which is the major apolipoprotein present in hdl will be synthesized by intestine so I'm going to make APOA1 here APOA1 that is a major apolipoprotein coming from intestine and it will come from hepatocytes as it is synthesized and secreted by intestine and the hepatocyte APOA1 it brings phospholipid so it will bring phospholipid along with that so there will be phospholipid so it APOA1 along with the phospholipid once it is there in the circulation this APOA1 it's going to recruit different proteins that are there in the circulation basically it is going to recruit CETP cholesterol ester transport protein which is synthesized by the liver 
is going to recruit peroxonase enzyme, which is an antioxidant enzyme. It's going to recruit LCAT enzyme, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme, and it's going to recruit all the apolipoproteins except FOB100 and FOB48. Okay, so it has got plenty of proteins on its surface and it has got phospholipid there. The molecule that you see here, which is called as discoid nascent HDL, discoidal, discoidal because it looks like a disc shape, that's why it is discoidal nascent, nascent HDL. This is a discoidal nascent HDL, newly synthesized HDL molecule. Okay, it has got phospholipid there. L APOA1, CETP, peroxinase, LCAT, and also it has got all the other apolipoproteins except B48 and B100. Okay, that is why HDL is acting as a donor of other apolipoproteins to other lipoprotein molecules, like what we have seen before. So we, I have said chylomicron is gaining C2 and APOE from HDL. VLDL gaining FOC2 and FOE from HDL. Whenever these molecules are releasing FOC2 and FOE, they all will come back to HDL. Like I am releasing FOC2 here. When the chylomicron is converted to chylomicron remnant, FOC2 is released and that FOC2 will go back to HDL. When VLDL is converted to IDL, FOC2 is released and that is going back to HDL. And also, as I said, so IDL which is converted to LDL. So there will be release of FOE here, FOE. This FOE will be going back to HDL. And also as it is seen, given here, IDL to LDL, FOE will go back to HDL. It means HDL will donate apolipoproteins whenever these other lipoproteins they need, need apolipoprotein molecules. Okay, let's see what happens to nascent discoidal HDL. This nascent discoidal HDL is going to get cholesterol from peripheral tissue. Now here is your peripheral tissue. What we have seen, peripheral tissue takes LDL from circulation by LDL receptor, cholesterol, cholesterol ester along with vitamin E reaches the peripheral tissue. Peripheral tissue uses that cholesterol, cholesterol ester for whatever the needs of that tissue. Just in case, if there is plenty of cholesterol in the peripheral tissue, they will decrease expression of LDL receptor on the surface and also they are going to pump out that extra cholesterol into the circulation. Basically, the extra cholesterol is pumped out by ABCA1 transporter. The name of the transporter which is pumping out extra cholesterol from peripheral tissues to HDL specifically is ABCA1 that is ATP binding cassette transporter A1 that this, this is the type of ATP binding cassette transporter what it does so it is going to when the cholesterol is pumped out it is in direct basically it is in connection with the LCAT I'll the LCAT is here down here discoidal nascent HDL so what I'll do is I'm going to bring that discoidal nascent HDL down here so that I can I'll be able to explain you better so what I'm, I'm just bringing this discoidal nascent HDL and writing that here. So it has got phospholipid, it has got LCAT, LCAT here, it has got peroxinase, it has got CETP and it has got APOA1, APOA1. Now APOA1 is a positive modulator of LCAT, APOA1 basically act, activate LCAT enzyme. Okay, when ABCA1 is transporting excess cholesterol out of the peripheral tissue into the blood and that is taken up by the LCAT enzyme, what this LCAT does with that cholesterol? So the cholesterol here, cholesterol which is coming out, it will be converted into cholesterol ester by LCAT enzyme. Name of the LCAT basically it is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. Okay, what it does? It is going to take cholesterol and it's going to break down lecithin. Lecithin is phosphatidylcholine, PC, PC for phosphatidylcholine. Other name for phosphatidylcholine is lecithin. Lecithin. And it's going to release that lecithin as lysolecithin. Lysolecithin. Lecithin is converted to lysolecithin. So the difference between lecithin and lysolecithin is lysolecithin do not have a fatty acid. Lecithin is losing fatty acid and becoming lysolecithin. Where did that fatty acid go? That fatty acid is taken up by the LCAT and insert that fatty acid into cholesterol at the third carbon 
hydroxyl group at the third carbon and convert that into cholesterol ester. That is the function of LCAT. So LCAT converts cholesterol into cholesterol ester and it is going to load it into the center of a discoidal nascent HDL molecule. So LCAT continuously does this. So as the continuous accumulation of cholesterol ester goes on, it is going to be accumulated in the center, core, central core of nascent discoidal HDL molecule. That's why it's going to change its shape. Basically, your nascent discoidal HDL molecule will be converted into HDL3 because of the continuous, continuous action of LCAT enzyme. That is the enzyme which is responsible for conversion of nascent discoidal HDL into HDL3. Because of this, what happens? Your HDL3 has become rich in cholesterol ester. And this cholesterol ester present in the HDL3, now it is ready for exchange done by CETP, which I have already explained you previously. So the CETP which is, a, which is there on the surface of HDL3 molecule, in fact any HDL molecule, what it does, now it's going to exchange this extra excess cholesterol ester with the VLDL, IDL, LDL in exchange for triacylglycerol. So, with the continuous action of CETP, so your HDL3 is losing cholesterol ester and it is gaining triacylglycerol, okay? Because of this what happens, triacylglycerol content increases and cholesterol ester content is still present there. So, and also of course, it has got FOA1 on the surface, it has got LCAT, all those enzymes, CETP, peroxinase, all enzymes, all the other apolipoproteins except ApoB100, B48 still there. But the only thing is HDL3, now it is converted to HDL2 molecule. This is HDL2. HDL2 has more triacylglycerol. And also it has continued to accumulate cholesterol ester because this LCAT here, it continues to work on HDL2 also. Whatever the LCAT, that function that we have seen here, LCAT continue to do its function. So it means it is continue to load cholesterol ester. On one side, HDL3 is losing cholesterol ester by CETP and gaining triacylglycerol. That's why HDL2 has got more triacylglycerol, but it continues to have cholesterol ester. Although it is losing by CETP, but it continues to contain it. Why? Because LCAT is bringing it continuously. So as HDL3 is going into HDL2, LCAT continue to work and you still have cholesterol ester here. Okay. Now, what will happen to this HDL2 now? So HDL2 has got two fate. One is HDL2 can go to the liver and interact with SRB1 receptor. SRB1 receptor. And what this SRB1 receptor does? So SRB1 receptor, which is present over the hepatocyte membrane. So it is going to take up take away cholesterol and cholesterol ester from HDL2 molecule and also there is an enzyme called HL that is hepatic lipase which is very miss which is besides to hepatic lipase which is besides to SRB1 which is on this surface of hepatocyte what it does is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acids and glycerol molecule. So basically HDL2 as it is passing through the hepatocyte membrane it is going to lose its cholesterol ester and cholesterol is going to lose its triacylglycerol and that will be taken up by the liver. So at the end of it all what happens to your HDL2? HDL2 is coming back as nascent discoidal HDL. It means cholesterol ester and triglycerides are taken by the liver and the rest of the molecule is released and that's what is nascent discoidal HDL molecule. That's one fate of it. Another fate is HDL2 can interact only with hepatic lipase. HDL2 is interacting only with the hepatic lipase. It's not interacting with the SRB1. It is interacting with the hepatic lipase and losing only triacylglycerol part of it. And the rest of the molecule will come as HDL3 molecule. Okay. So if you degrade only triacylglycerol part of HDL2, retain cholesterol ester. So basically you are bringing it back to HDL3 because as you all know, HDL3 is rich in cholesterol ester, whereas HDL2 is rich in both triacylglycerol and cholesterol ester. So hepatic lipase is taking only triacylglycerol into the liver, rest of the molecule is released and that is what is HDL3 molecule. So 
nascent and discoidal HDL into HDL3 done by LCAT enzyme. HDL3 into HDL2 is done by CETP and LCAT, both the enzymes. Now HDL2 will be going back to the liver by SRB1 receptor coming out as discoidal nascent HDL after the action of SRB1 and hepatic lipase. Or if only hepatic lipase acts, it is coming back as HDL3. Now overall what we have done here, so overall we have taken cholesterol present in the peripheral tissue back into the liver. Okay. So the cholesterol, excess cholesterol present in the peripheral tissue is taken up by the HDL and HDL, nascent discoidal HDL converted to HDL3, HDL3 converted to HDL2, HDL2 has given that cholesterol back into liver and this journey of cholesterol from peripheral tissues to the liver is called as reverse cholesterol transport. Normally what happens, liver is going to synthesize cholesterol and put it on to VLDL, VLDL is converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL, LDL is taken up by the liver, sorry peripheral tissue. That's an onward journey for cholesterol. So cholesterol coming from liver to the peripheral tissue helped by VLDL, IDL and LDL ultimately. That is an onward journey of cholesterol. Reverse journey, peripheral tissues to discoidal nascent HDL, HDL3, HDL2 to the liver. And that's the reverse journey of cholesterol. And that's what is reverse cholesterol transport mechanism. With this, basically HDL is not allowing cholesterol to accumulate in the peripheral tissue and that helps in the prevention of atherosclerosis. Thank you.